Hi, in this lesson we are going to see how to prepare the target host for Oracle eBusiness Suite 12.2 cloning. If you do not have any prior knowledge on Oracle Linux 7 installation, then I strongly recommend you to go to the course called Oracle Linux Virtualization and Essentials. It's a free course and in that course you can see Oracle Linux 7 installation and how to install the basic packages, OS packages which are related to the database installation and also the eBusiness Suite. So both eBusiness Suite and database will require basically the pre-installed RPMs and have shown in that specific lesson how to install these OS packages. Anyway, in this lesson also we are going to see uh, the briefly about how to install these OS packages. What I'm going to do is since I have already an Oracle Linux 7 installation VM, I'm going to use that. I'm going to clone that simply using VirtualBox and I'm going to create two VMs. One VM will be for the database and one VM will be for, will be for the application. I'm going to use these two VMs basically for the targets, for the target host. So first what I have to do is I have to change basically the host names since it's a clone of the existing VM. I have to change the host names and then follow, follow that. I'll be create, I'll be installing all the necessary OS packages. Then finally I'll create all the users, groups and directory structure. So since I'm actually using uh, an existing installation of Oracle Linux 7, there is obviously going to be all the requ required users and groups. So I just have to verify whether all users and groups are there as required or not. For this whole Oracle Eveness Fit cloning, the entire chapter, we are going to use a single, uh, single activity guide, which is EBS cloning guide. And uh, this is the Eveness Fit cloning activity guide. And first, part of it which is this specific lesson we are going to see how to configure the target host. Now let us see how to create the VMs first. So I have this Oracle Linux 7 machine. I am going to simply clone this specific VM. Clone and I am going to name it as EBS DBN1 simply speaking and uh, the naming convention is simple EBS DBN1 and EBS app N1. So the advantage of naming like this is even later on if I want to convert this specific VM to rack, I'm going to create another VM called EBSDBN2. Now uh, just uh, don't change any other options. We just need uh, the default options to be selected. Click on next and full clone. Usually it will take a couple of minutes based on uh, your CPU. So it's done. So I'm going to create another VM similar to this. I'm going to click on clone. And then I will name it as EBS app N1. So click on next, click on full clone. So now I have two VMs. One is EBS DBN1 and EBS app N1. One is for the database, one is for the application. Now let us try to see how to prepare these two VMs for the cloning. Done. So what I'll do is I'll simply try to uh, start these VMs. First of all, I'll start with the DBN1. So let's log in. I'm going to log in as root. So the only thing that is required for now initially is to just change the IP address. Once we have an IP address here properly set, I can access the VM directly from any SSH tools such as uh, Putty or Mobile Xtrem. So I'm going to use Mobile Xtrem to access this specific VM. So let us change the IP first. So here, the first one is basically for the NAT, which is for the internet. And the second one is going to be the bridge network, which is for the local network. And third one is like a private network, which is used generally for rack. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to wired settings here. And uh, here I'll go to settings. So I'll go to IPv4 and the IP which I'm going to give will be 196 and I'll save it and I'm going to disable the other, uh, other private IP right now which is not required for us at this point of time. As you can see, the IP address is 10.10. something, which I'm not going to use right now. So I'm going to disable it. And uh, so let us try to save it. 
and also since we are already logged in let's go to the 10 mil and uh, let us see what is the host name right now so let us change this host name to host name ctl using host name ctl we're going to change it set host name and let's give it as eps db and one dot fine dot com done let us change the etc host as well and we have kept it as 196 and here also we are going to change it the host name eps dbn1 and uh, finally the host name alias that also i'm going to press eps dbn1 so looks good so i'm going to save it and uh, let's do a reboot so similarly i'm going to do the same thing for the ebs app n1 as well so let us start the vm Note. Similar to the database machine, we are going to first assign the new IP to the virtual machine of application node also. So we have allocated 196 IP address which is 192.168.0.196. I am going to keep 197 reserved for rack if it is required in future and I am going to assign 198 as the IP of the application node. So let's go to the settings. Click on settings here. And let us go to IPv4. And I'm going to keep it as 198. Click on apply. And I'm going to disable the other uh, network interface, which is going to be used mainly for rack actually. Since it's application node, we don't require it right now. So once this is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the host name. So host name CTL, set host name, EBS app and one dot dot com. So I'm going to go to ETC host and let's change the details here. This is 198 and uh, the host name is EBS app and one and the host name Elias app and one save it now let's do a reboot so now both of the hosts for the application that is the data database and the application nodes both are now ready so now let us use mobile xdown to access the vms from now onwards since we have already configured the basic ip address and the host name now we can actually proceed to the mobile xterm so here in the mobile xterm what i've done is i've kept actually two ip addresses already set so i think we have to modify the application one here edit so i'll keep as 198 since it's 198 so let's connect to db node once it's working fine and i'll also connect to the application node So it's asking for the password, login. So now both of these VMs actually are already having the required pre-installed RPMs. You can see the list of the pre-installed RPMs that are required in the activity guide. So in the activity guide, you can see the list of packages that are required. So I've already installed these packages in the Oracle Linux 7 VM just after the OS installation. Since we cloned the Oracle Linux 7 machine, we now we already have these specific OS packages. So let us verify them. So simply run rpm QA, grep, pre install. And you can see both EBS and the database ones. So to just verify the user limits, for example, you go to security limits.d and you can see EBS. You can see that APPLMJR user limits are already set. So now what we have to do is we have to add some storage that is required for the database and on the application tail let's see the storage so we have around 200 gb available which is definitely sufficient for us for the application tier 
So mainly the challenge will be on the database layer because we'll be requiring somewhere around 300 GB for the database. So here it is not sufficient actually. So I'm going to add an additional disk to this specific virtual machine. So for that, what we'll do, let us shut down this database machine first. And let us go back to the virtual box. This is my virtual box. And uh, the DB machine is now powered off. So let, what I'll do, I'll go to settings and storage. So I'm going to add a new hard disk. Just click on add hard disk. Okay, let's try to create the hard disk, I'm sorry. So click on create. It's a VDI, dynamically allocated. And I'm going to keep it as a DBN1 underscore one, which is fine. I'm going to keep it as 500 GB. And uh, let's keep it maybe, for example, 750 GB. And click on create. It's done. So now what I'm going to do here, you can see something uh, with the name, uh, this one, EBS DBN1 underscore one. Choose it. That's it. It's added right now. So click on OK. So now I'm going to start the VM. So once you have the disk add additional disk that has been added to your uh, virtual machine, what you have to do is you have to just format it with uh, the ext4 file system and then you have to mount it as let's say for example u02. So let us reconnect now. So what I will do is I'll type fdisk fnl. So you can see that the new disk of around uh, 800 GB is added right now. So I'm going to type fdisk dev sdb. It's a new partition and I'm going to create a primary partition, single partition and done. So now, now if you type as disk fnl, you can see that we have a new partition that has been created. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to format this specific disk now. So let's run mkfs dot ext4 slash dev sdb1 done so now what we have to do is we have to mount this specific uh, specific partition dev sdb1 so what i'll do now first is i'll create a directory make directory slash u02 and i'll use the command mount slash dev sdb1 to slash u02 so now run dffnh and you can see that we have u02 mounted here which is of 750 gb size so to make these changes permanent what i have to do is i have to keep these details in the etcfs tab so for that i'll go to etcfs tab and let's add uh, dev sdb1 and the partition is um, slash u02 and it's a ext4 file system and I'll put it as default options and this will be 0 space 0 done so the next time when you're restarting your operating system you'll be having this mount point mounted automatically so now what we have done so far is we have actually created two VMs one is for the database one is for the application we verified the required users security limits and RPMs that is packages and uh, we'll create the necessary directory structure during the actual cloning operation so in the next lesson what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the source system for cloning